watching Chopping It Up with Roger Kador and Perry White. All right, it is Monday morning, and it is another episode of Chopping It Up with Coach Roger Cato. I am Perry White. He is the man, the myth, the legend, and he's getting younger each show. Roger Cato, I'm a man on the board, Garrett Edgerson. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Good morning, and hello to everyone, and good morning, and hello to you, Coach. Hello, PJ. How you doing today? <laughs> I heard you should be feeling good. You got a chance to go home. Yeah. Pine Bluff, and... See the family and enjoy good food. Yeah, I did have a good time, man. I had an opportunity to go back to Palm Bluff, Arkansas this weekend. Southern and UAPB had a game. Uh, it didn't turn out for the Palm Bluff fans is the way I thought that they probably would have thought it was going to be. But Southern goes and get the victory, 27-0. Man, and come back. Listen, I'm disappointed in my hometown, Coach. I don't know how it is when you go back to, to new roads and you look around and maybe it could have been at one time – a little bit more vibrant or seem like it's upbeat. But for Palm Bluff, listen, it's not vibrant. It's not upbeat. It's nothing. I was a little disappointed. And it seems like every time I go back, it seems like it's going just a little bit further down and down and down. And it just makes you really say, man, I'm glad I was able to get away from this place. That happens to a lot of places like uh, Pine Bluff across America. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the young people leave and go off to college and they don't go back because of opportunities elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So they have a tendency to leave and not go there and it gets stagnated with the same people there. And you know, and with the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff not growing, it doesn't make thing any better, you know? So it's all about economic development, opportunity, getting good companies to come in that's gonna hire people and pay good, give them good paying jobs. It is, man, and you know what I do because I'm at Southern, I'm in a position to try to make things exciting when the Southern UAPB game comes. Because a lot of people tend to not think that it's that exciting, and which rightfully so. But, you know, you try to do so much to hype it up until when you get there, and it's like, yeah, this is what I hyped up, y'all, you know. And everybody's looking like, yeah, this ain't it, Perry. Well, it's college football, and I think you should hype it up. There is a certain amount of excitement mm -hmm. about it. Even people who like all code, it's, it's – to me, it's a remote, and like Ina Bina, Alcorn is remotely located mm -hmm. from everything. But mm -hmm. for some reason, they found a way to make this thing worth coming to. Palm Bluff? Nah. <laughs> nah, not at all. Gee, what you thought about Palm Bluff? You came, this this was his second time. We went two years ago for homecoming, and I hyped it up. It didn't live up to the expectation. So I said, maybe this time, but I'm, I'm 0 for 2. Yeah, you... you yeah, strike out. It's over. No, nah, I ain't striking out. I just, I'm good. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I, I'll say homecoming was better than this time, to yeah. be honest. Even with the band going this time, it was still, I felt the more, I felt more energy for homecoming. Yeah, it, it, and that's, that's typically for a UAPB crowd and Pine Bluff, you know. The game started at four, Coach. I, when we were pulling in and I kind of, I went around on the cart, uh, I was seeing people just pulling in at like one one thirty, taking their grills off the trucks and putting their tents. I'm like, you're late. You're late. The game is at four. We're just getting started at one one thirty. You're supposed to get do that at eight in the morning, seven well, in the morning. Well, at least ten, twelve, ten, eleven o'clock. You want to be out there cooking. Yeah. And it's the camaraderie. <laughs> the camaraderie. Yeah, camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, just being able to talk to people. And mingle, you know. They didn't want to do that either, man. I, I was having a tough time, man. I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. My my spirits is low. Y'all done kind of <laughs> wore me thin. You know, I, I don't worry about it no more. I, I, I promise you I won't put any more hype back into it. But it just makes you, I guess, small town USA. Uh, when you're a person like what you said when you were younger, you knew just that was more for you than what was just your community and the environment that was only giving you this small minute sample size of really what the rest of the world could really be and you knew the rest of the world was out there it was just you had to unplug yourself to be able to go to see the rest of the world and i'm glad man because when, when i went back this weekend it just really i just really thought about that and i looked around got to see people that i went to school with i got a chance to be around people i don't judge anybody do what you do your life is your life but i just i'm glad that my life was able to move in a direction that was able to get me out of an environment that i just felt probably would not be conducive to who i am and my growth and development as a person that's right and i got to meet you hey major league baseball <laughs> really did well 
uh, this weekend. I mean, the schedule makers. What are the odds that the season would go <laughs> all the way down to 162 <laughs> games? You really like that, huh? Yeah, you talking about now? I got. I'm glad I got to meet you. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> 162 games. That's what makes baseball so great. People don't understand it. You played all those games. Well, it had to for Houston, Texas. It came right down to the last last 162nd game. Yeah, you talk about games played yesterday. Major League Baseball, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. Astros get a victory, eight to one. The Nationals getting a a, a close one over the Braves, ten nine. But the Braves, 104 victories, a triple. Digit victories on the season. I mean, how hard is it to win a hundred plus games in Major League Baseball? Well, it tell you, you got to be good. The worst teams in baseball going to win usually thirty three percent of their game or thirty percent of their game. So that's how I tell you how hard it is mm-hmm. to also beat bad teams. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, there it is. Miami Marlins. Yeah, you know, I for me, it's it's really. It was really good because I had two of my very best friends, Dusty Baker, obviously the manager with the uh, Astros, and Kim M., who is the first female general manager, is my friend. And she really did a great job with Miami getting them into the playoff. So I'm so happy we exchanged texts yesterday. Uh, You know, I gave her the big... Go, girl, go get them, girl. <laughs> you know. You know, I keep going. Boston, uh, the Red Sox get the victory over the Orioles 6-1. The Dodgers get the victory 5-2 over the Giants. It, this game has some excitement, and I love to see the crowd. But now the Dodgers, they're now triple-digit wins on the season, 100 victories on the season right now. Uh, you talked about the Marlins. They fell short yesterday to Pittsburgh Pirates 3-0. The Angels, Anaheim Angels, the Los Angeles Anaheim Angels. Say, help me out. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. There you go. Damn. Gee, the, got it. <laughs> the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, seven. <laughs> uh, the Oakland A's, three. Uh, you got Tampa Bay. The Rays get the victory over the Blue Jays, 12 8. The Brewers get the Cubs. G and I saw the Brewers and Cubs some years back up there in Milwaukee, man. The year the Cubs actually won the World Series. So I can scratch that off that, the list. And I got a chance to see the Cubs the year that we thought they would never win the World Series. Uh, go ahead. You got something, G? Oh, 4 0. Brewers up. Tigers beating the Guardians, 5 2. The Yankees, G. You over it? Yeah, I'm glad the season is over. Damn. They lose 5-2 to Kansas City. The Phillies roll on over the Mets 9-1. The Padres getting 2-1 in the 11th inning over the White Sox. The Mariners 1-0 over the Rangers. 3-2 Rockies over the Twins. And the Cardinals and the Reds 4-3. Saw a lot of tight games. What's going on with these games where you just see coming down to the wire just tight games by one run? Well, that's what it's designed. These teams are pretty much suited to be that way with each other. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, baseball was very competitive. And, you know, we saw something else happen in baseball the last game of the year. Miggy Carrero uh, retired. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, uh, Tito Terry Francona retired as the manager of the Cleveland. And Bucky Showalter is all over for him in New York. So all of that happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was really good. You know something, Tampa Bay won 99 games. So it, you know how hard it is? You had the Brave and the Dodgers won 100 game each, mm-hmm. and then Tampa won 99. <clears throat> I mean, that's really close. Yeah, that's some impressive stuff. Yeah, impressive stuff, you know, to be able to do it. And remember how baseball is so funny. You remember Tampa got off to that great start? Mm-hmm. Everybody thought they were going to run away with it. Mm-hmm. But the people who knew baseball say not so fast mm-hmm. because it's a 162 game. It's a really demanding stress, stretch. <clears throat> and Lord and behold, Baltimore overtook them. And Baltimore, I think, won 100 games. If we, you know, so it's interesting. And then Texas Rangers was in first place for the— The Orioles did. They won 101 games yeah. this year. Yeah, and Texas was in first place until late August. And then they they barely got into the playoff. 
So it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting how this game works out. And be, people who are purists, who love the game of baseball, this was their kind of season because they really got to get dive right into it. Before we dive into the wild cards, I want to ask you a question because you're talking about so many games, and I know the games have increased. But to play that many games, to go back and think about a guy like Cal Ripken, who didn't miss so many games for so many years, how tough is that for a player like a Cal Ripken Jr. to have – played that many consecutive games for so long and so many years it's a grind I mean I played the game when I was playing in the minor we were playing 142 games mm-hmm. that's our season that's a lot you're playing every day you know and it's a grind uh you know I would play I was play averaging about 130 games a year mm-hmm. out of the 140 so it's uh it's tough. It's not easy. And Cal Ripken just rolled him on, man. I mean, rolled him. And just think of the days he was hurt, and he, he rolled out of the bed and played. <laughs> no, seriously. 2,632 games straight. 2,632 games 2, straight? 2,632 games. That's, a, that's amazing. I mean, that were days he was hurt. He had a good trainer because, you know, and he's probably had – more training, got doctors that gave him some injection when he was hurting so bad and he wanted to play. That recommend a lot. 2,632 consecutive games of not missing, Coach. That, that's that's, that's, that's mind-blowing. It is. It is mind-blowing. We'll never Boy. see that. I'm not going to say you'll never. It's the way things are now, people have no reason yeah. to want to do it. Yeah. If you heard him, why would I go out there? Yeah. And I'm going to be paid. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's a hell of a grind, coach. Oh, it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and playing shortstop on top of that. Um, 2,632 like games. My, man. Just a. May 30th, 1982 until September 19th, <laughs> 1998. Uh, this is why you got to have a good man. <laughs> A good engineer, a good producer can bring up this stuff. That is amazing, man. That is it's mind blowing to me. I'm just trying to fathom that and think about that, coach. But considering we you can barely get a guy to probably play sixty consecutive games these days, right? You're lucky, yeah. <laughs> the money is so good and there is no demand for them to do it. Just like you're not gonna see pitchers Probably, uh, <clears throat> well, you're not going to see pitchers probably pitching 300 innings yeah. anymore. They don't, you know, you're barely going to find a 20-game winner, let alone 300 innings yeah. or 300 strikeouts. Five innings, six innings. And I'm thinking it's going to specialize even more going into the future. Yeah. Because they they're going to find a one inning pitcher that they can you get a lead fifth six seven eight nine this is the way they're going and I think Houston have done a fantastic job with four bullpen guys you know they get them and they they're rolling right there with them you know and let's jump into the wild card the AL wild card and everything's going to jump off Tuesday uh, you got the Rangers versus the Rays the Rangers right there 90 games on the season the Rays as you said one game away uh, 99 wins on the season what do you think about that matchup 2 p.m. on ABC come Tuesday between the Rangers and the Rays just think about this Texas after losing to my uh, Ma- uh, uh, the Mariners had to jump on a plane from the tip of the Pacific Northwest Pacific, and all the way down to the tip of the South mm-hmm. in Florida. The furthest, the two further places you can go. Mm-hmm. So you can bet today they're probably going to take it easy mm-hmm. because that was a long flight. Yeah. You know. Uh, what they say is they say stay light on your feet today. Probably. Yeah. And tomorrow, when they play? Tomorrow, Tuesday at Tomorrow's 2 o'clock. Tuesday. Mm-hmm. They play first. Yep, first Whoa, game. First you, game. Yeah, no, that's really tough. This is what betters, the people in Vegas look at. They're going to put that 
consider that 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 plane ride. I'm one of those betters. G, you betting? You you fooling with this this wild card? I might. I might. <laughs> All right, we move on from the Rangers and the Rays. Game one to be Tuesday. Uh, AL wild card. Another game. The Blue Jays and the Twins. The Blue Jays with 89 victories on the season. The Twins 87. This at 3:30 on ESPN. What you think about this matchup between the Twins and the Blue Jays? That's a good matchup. Mm-hmm. And Blue Jays got the arms. Gossman probably pitching. They've got an advantage there. I'll pick the Blue Jays if I was a betting man. What would you? Who did you pick in that Rays and Rangers game? I I didn't. Okay. I would think the Rays have an advantage. <laughs> okay, because of being at home and having to go on the road so far for the yeah, Rangers yeah, yeah, from yeah. the Northeast now. And to the, the Ranger pitchers hadn't been that good. Yeah. All right, let's jump over to the NL wild card. You got the Diamondbacks, Arizona Diamondbacks versus the Brewers. The Brewers, 92-win season this year uh, for the Diamondbacks, 84 wins. What do you look in this game, 6 p.m. first pitch, ESPN 2 on Tuesday? I think the Brewers will win. They're a balanced team. They got good pitching, and they got clutch hitting. So I like them over a young Arizona team. Remember, they limped into the playoffs. They didn't swing the bat that good going into the playoffs. And then the late game is going to be the Marlins, 84 wins on the season versus the Phillies with 90 wins on the season, 7 o'clock ESPN, game one. Marlins and Phillies, coach. I like the Phillies. They're playing hot at the right time just as they did last year. Plus, they've got the components in place with the bats, and their pitching has been pretty good. So I like them over the Marlins. Let me ask you this. Game one of a series in terms of a wild card, how important it is to come out there and get that first victory and not have to play from behind? Well, you always want to win game one because that means they got to not beat you twice, Mm -hmm. two more times to get ahead of you. So that's the philosophy that exists. Just like you want to stay out of the loser's bracket. Yeah. It's it's just you don't want to get there. You got to find more pitching when you get in the loser's bracket. You're right about that. We want to thank our friends over at Coca-Cola for giving us all these beautiful and wonderful uh, different products that they have. I, I, my personal choice is that Blue Power Ray. Hey, that's the shake back, as I call it. That thing could get you back right after whatever evening, day, of whatever you had. So I like that Blue Power Ray. Which one you like, Coach? I like them all. You like but them? I, the Monster <laughs> has really jumped out pretty good on yeah, me. Yeah, that's the one? Yeah, I like that Monster. All right, let's get ready to take a break. We'll come back and talk more about the world of sports and anything else. All right, so y'all stay tuned more. Topping up with Kadar. Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. The ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Smart Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge because BTR is so close and convenient, they're always one step ahead rather than dead on their feet. So, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. BRAC implemented the Imagine Your Park strategic plan nearly 20 years ago. The results transformed the park system in East Baton Rouge Parish. There are 12 new community parks, six dog parks, Liberty Lagoon Water Park, skateboard parks, fishing ponds, a new conservation area in Central, improved playgrounds, and a growing trail system. It's really a lot to keep track of. So we decided to give you an insider's peek into some of these amazing new community assets through the eyes of the folks who know them best, Brax Community Partners. My name is Nathaniel Clum, and I am Paddle BR. What I often say I am is chief doer of stuff. The two things that everyone wanted were paddling and trails, and in our case, paddle trails. <laughs> and so we did a lot of work to make it so that people could get out on the bayou, but without 
without access points, no one can use them. Rec has been amazing at building paddle launch sites so that we can get out on the water and enjoy everything that Baton Rouge has to offer. Not, not only are they listening to everything that Imagine Your Parks and Imagine Your Parks 2 that we ask for, but it's actually getting done, which but that makes me happy every day of the week. No wonder, Breck is the recipient of the National Gold Medal by the National Recreation and Parks Association. There really is something about East Baton Rouge and national champions. Breck, number one and still getting better. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. <laughs> Get the memoir from the legendary baseball coach from Southern University. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kid's playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. Get the memoir from the legendary baseball coach from Southern University, Roger Kador. Against all odds, Roger refused to let his past dictate his future by rising to legendary college baseball status. An inspiring story of tenacity, faith, and hope. Against all odds chronicles Coach Kador's determination to reach higher, to want more, and to dig deeper to find the courage to chase his dreams. Against all odds, get yours today by Cater and Cater Publishing. You are now watching Chopping It Up with Roger Cater and Perry White. All right, we're back with more Chopping It Up with Cater. I'm Perry White. He's the man, the myth, the legend, Roger Cater himself, and my man Garrett Edgerson over here on the board holding down for his coach. Just got through talking about baseball. It is that time of the year. The wild card is jumping off for the AL American League and the National League, but as well, it's college football season, so what better way uh, than to talk about what happened in week five of the college football season than right here on the show? And there were some pretty good games in the top. 25, I will say. Uh, let's start with Friday night, Oregon State and Utah. Utah falling to Oregon State. I thought Utah was a, a legit college football playoff team. They probably still could be considering the conference that they're in. But Oregon State able to get the victory at number 19 over number 10, Utah 21-7. to uh, You go to Penn State completely dismantling uh, Northwestern 41-13, to Penn State number 6 in the nation. I think they're a team you got to watch out for. I like the way Penn State is playing right now. USC and Colorado, I'm not sure if you got a chance to watch this game. Uh, USC getting a victory 48-41 to over Colorado. Of course, Colorado fell out of the top 25. But man, what a hell of a game when you look at this. In the second half, Colorado in the fourth quarter held US USC to zero points. But Colorado was also able to put up 27 unanswered points in the second half to make this game a lot closer. They couldn't get an onside kick with the couple seconds that was left in the game, but still falling short. Man, what a hell of a comeback and a battle that you saw from Colorado uh, trying to battle back on USC and their Heisman Trophy winner of last year, Caleb Williams. Well, I thought, and I didn't see the whole game in the beginning. I didn't, but I saw two things happen. The missed field goal that they missed in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. Which was huge. You, you got to make it. You got to make it. Because it's point. And what was that guy doing when he tried to run to kick the ball? He ran up to the guy to kick it and he got blocked. Mm -hmm. That's two gimmies. You eliminate those mistakes. 
And it's a total different game from a mental standpoint. You got me? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I saw that. That was one in my observations. Yeah, Colorado's going to have to build up some depth at defense and get some athletes on that side of the ball uh, unless they want to do shootouts with everybody. And right now that's what it's looking like, a, a shootout type of season with them, especially when you get a chance to go up against offenses that can score as well, like you saw with Oregon, now with USC. We move on. Here's an underdog that got a victory. Kentucky versus Florida. Florida number 22 in the nation going on the road up to Lexington, Kentucky. And Kentucky dominates this ball game. Get a victory 33-14. to Georgia on the road at Auburn. Georgia getting a victory. Number one team in the nation 27-20 to over the Auburn Tigers. Michigan completely just beating up all over Nebraska 45-7. to Michigan a number two team in the nation. Texas battles back and completely runs away with it against Kansas. Kansas number 24 in the nation. Texas number 3. 40-14 to final with Texas. Mizzou and Vanderbilt, Mizzou number 23 in the nation, getting a victory 38-21. to Here's one that came down to the last second. And uh, here in South Louisiana, I'm sure all eyes were on this game. LSU on the road at Ole Miss. LSU number 13 in the nation. Ole Miss number 20. It comes down to the end. Ole Miss finds a way to battle back, scored late in the game. And LSU has one last chance. A he to the end zone. Hits the receiver in his hand. He just couldn't quite bring it down. Ole Miss gets the victory 55-49. to Is a trouble in paradise, as, so, as they sort of say, for LSU and Brian Kelly with now two Two losses on the season, but losing their first uh, game in SEC play. Well, I think it is. I mean, it's not going to be a his bed. It's not going to be a soft landing spot <laughs> with the fans the way they are because you still got Auburn, still got uh, Alabama out there, uh, Texas A and M, Texas A and M. That's three teams mm-hmm. that could beat you. Yeah, because the defense literally stinks right now. Yeah, they do. That's how bad they are. Uh, from the defensive standpoint. And uh, so, you know, I don't know if they play Tennessee. They might lose this week. I didn't, I didn't even know Missouri was undefeated. Missouri is Missouri tough. This week. The top 25 team right now. I mean, it's a tough league to play in, uh, but they can score a lot of points, though. Yeah. That's the one thing. And I, I do know they have some athletes on the defense. There are a lot of people out of position right now. They're just not playing, you know. Uh, I see why he's bringing in Pete Jenkins, mm-hmm. the retired defense specialist, to help out why the coach, he, who defensive line coach, had had some, some illness, mm-hmm. you know, some uh, physical stuff. So there's a lot going on uh, with that. It goes to show you how specialized things are. If you're missing one component of where the teaching thing takes place, I can – Derail everything else. Uh, what do you think, G? Ole Miss fined a hundred thousand dollars for storming the field. What did you think about storming the field against LSU? Considering the matchup, was that worth storming the field? Nah, not nah. at all. It ain't. It ain't like they ain't beat LSU recently. They didn't beat them a few times. So I, I don't. Yeah, that was just okay. I guess they were too excited. Yeah, too excited. That's all it was. And these young people, man, yeah. that's they don't care about the hundred thousand dollar fine. I'm, I'm putting it on everybody billing statement. If I'm the yeah, president, that's it. yeah, yeah, they got to pay for this. We move on. Oregon, number nine in the country, completely just beats up on Stanford, forty two to six. Oklahoma's rolled on, number fourteen in the nation, fifty to twenty over Iowa State. Another game that went down to the wire. I'm not sure if you guys got a chance to check this one out late Saturday night. Notre Dame, number 11 against number 17. Duke Duke is a surprise this year. They came into this game undefeated. Notre Dame came in with one loss, of course, a last-second loss, uh, literally last-second loss to Ohio State at home up there in South Bend. But then Notre Dame found a way late in this game. They really was trying to play keep away with the clock, broke a big run, and was able to score late 21-14. Did you guys get a chance to see this one? I did not. Oh, man, hell of a game uh, for Notre Dame coming back to baby to get Duke. Duke is a really good team. I think they're going to turn a lot of heads as the season continues to go over in the ACC. They may be the team to beat in the ACC outside of what you see with Florida State. As we move on, Tennessee, number 21 in the nation, defeats South Carolina at home 41-20. to Alabama. 
now seems to have things going. But Mill Rose is their quarterback. He seems to be the guy. He can do it with his legs and with his arm. And he was on for the full display this weekend on the road up there in Starkville, Mississippi. Stark Vegas, as they like to call it, Alabama on the road, number 12, getting a victory 40-17. to 17. I liked what I saw with Alabama because the type of quarterback they have is the type of quarterback I like in college football these days. Washington continues to roll. Their quarterback is definitely has to be the front runner for the Heisman Trophy as they got the victory over Arizona. Another game they came down to the wire, 31-24, to Washington number seven in the nation. And then how about Fresno State? Still undefeated, 27-9 victory over Nevada. Any one of those games uh, stood out to you, Coach? Uh, that's West Coast game. I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> if it ain't East Coast or Central, it's all over. Let's take it over to the SWAC. Uh, you look back at week five, Grambling getting a big victory. You had to circle this game. Uh, Prayer View came into this victory 2-0, two wins on the season in conference play on the road at Texas Southern, on the road at Alcorn, able to – Come into this and create some excitement. They've had success over Grambling over the past few years. Grambling came in this thing, and listen, they were able to get it done at the State Fair Classic. This was probably the game of the week for me. Grambling gets this done 35-20. to 20. They're now in the driver's seat, as it seemed to be, in a great position for the SWAC West. Then you look over uh, Texas a and um, excuse me, T Tuskegee and Alabama A&M. It was Alabama A&M's homecoming. They gave it to get the victory 58-3 to over an undefeated Tuskegee team that came in. Uh, Texas Southern, it was their homecoming this weekend. They played Lincoln, California, the same team. Southern be playing for their homecoming. Texas Southern getting the victory 52-7. to Of course, we talked about Southern going on the road to Pine Bluff getting the victory 27-0. Here's a game that went into overtime. Alcorn and Bama State, two teams that struggle. Alcorn able to get a field goal in overtime against Bama State on the road in overtime, 23-20. to And then Southern's opponent this weekend, which should be the game of the week, Florida A&M versus Southern coming up. But, fam, you had to go up there to Itabina. You're talking about that's a tough road trip all the way from Tallahassee to Itabina because there's nothing in between. They struggled early on, but, fam, you slowly but surely pulled away getting the victory 31-7. to What uh, – um... What's Alcorn record? Alcorn on the season currently is sitting at only two victories. They're two and three. They got a victory against McNeese in non-conference, uh -huh. and then now they got a victory against Alabama State. Uh, you know, I always look at them as a tough opponent, Yeah, it's particularly in football, and that's why I was asking. Uh, it ought to be interesting in the West with Southern, Gramlin, Jackson, and Prairie View obviously yep. look like they're going to play a role. And who wins the West? The SWAC West standings currently, Grambling State 2-0 and in the SWAC Conference right now. Southern 2-0 and battling back right now, two straight victories. And the SWAC, you have Prairie View then in that third spot at 2-1. and Alcorn at 1-1, and and then Palm Bluff and Texas Southern both remain winless. You go over to the SWAC East, the opponent this weekend for Southern, which I think that should be the game of the week. The Rattlers of Florida and m 3-0, and 4-1 and overall. And then a and and Jackson State, Alabama a and and Jackson State. Both those two teams play this weekend. And they're both one and one in conference play, Coach. So things are going to start to heat up. We're getting into October. This is where you start to divide and start to see who's going to be the teams to start putting themselves in situations to ultimately win their division and try to get to that SWAC championship and ultimately the Celebration Bowl. And as the, wind, the weather turned to autumn, mm -hmm. you leave the hot season behind. This is usually when football gets to be its best. And historical, from historical proportion in the SWAC, October is the month. Mm -hmm. October is the month. Because this is where you – do you have five weeks in October or four? Let me look at the calendar right now. I can tell you right it's now. probably four. You have be, four. Yeah. Four. So you're going to have usually four pretty good games. Well, three because a lot of schools play their homecoming. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago when I was in school, we played Jackson State for homecoming. Oh, man, what kind of environment was that? <laughs> you know, that ain't going to happen no more – because people feel they got to win. Yeah. A homecoming is always, I think, now you're starting to see Southern. Last year was it Virginia Lynchburg. This yeah. year is Lincoln. They like, look, we got to get a for sure W. Yeah. For <laughs> we can't be like, dude, we lost the PV a few years ago at homecoming. Yeah. And everybody was sick. We yeah. was like, yeah, we can't do that no yeah. more. We yeah. Can't do it. Good morning to Sean Moore. He says, good morning, Coach P. White and Garrett, man. Good morning. Thank you for good tuning morning. in. Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, Coach, as we talked about college football, we start to move forward. Do you have a favorite team that you've been watching so far in college football, or are you kind of just open to everybody? I'm just open. But I I tell you, I was impressed with that quarterback, uh, 
Williams, <laughs> Caleb Williams. Oh, uh, with uh, with USC. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Oh yes, it's the real deal. Yeah, he can sling the thing. He can sling it from all angles, mm-hmm. and that's plus he's got a sixth sense. He can feel where the def- when the defensive players are on him, and he can maneuver. Mm-hmm. That's why he doesn't get hit a lot. Transfer coming in with uh, Lincoln Riley from Oklahoma, and now they've taken over USC and getting USC back on the map. How about all the celebrities this weekend at that Colorado and USC game, man? It was star-studded on the sideline. The only person they was missing was you, Coach. <laughs> you was the only person they were missing. Well, they were never going to see me there. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, you know, I saw C.C. Sabathia. Yeah, that, that really surprised me. Yeah, well, th- this is – and they all want to support Dion mm-hmm. or Coach Prime, I better say that. They want to show the support for him, and they want him to be successful because it's important. Mm-hmm. It's important because being the kind of person he is, he's done a lot of talking. And now segment of people that hate him mm-hmm. or hate on him and hate what he's doing. So all these cele- ce- celebs – Want to support him, get him over. And, you know, I knew this year he couldn't possibly do all what he needs to do. It's so hard when you, you know, you're taking all transfers. You got to get, you got to hit on all of them mm-hmm. in order to turn it around. But I think he's going to be able to bring in more tr- transfer kids. Recruit. He's got to get better offensive linemen, defensive linemen. He's got to. That's. That's a necessity. Yeah, the trenches. You, the trenches where you win the games. And Big Warren Sapp says he wants to coach. He's, he's going to he get coming. his degree. He said he's coming. He said, I'm coming. See, when you start getting people like that, and he knows whether or not he can coach, he knows what it takes, though. Yeah. See, what I try to tell people over the years, being a great player never means you're going to be a good coach. hmm because your ability was the thing that caused you to play. Mm-hmm. Not You didn't have to think as much. Mm-hmm. The guy who had less talent had to figure out strategy, figure out schemes. Mm-hmm. And they may be more equipped to coach someone. That's why I worry about great players. That's why they never make good coaches mm. only. Because they, their ability played. Is Dion an exception? Well, he ain't coaching. He, he, he's <laughs> what he doing out there? Well, he just, he's got his He's coaching. just motivating. He's a master yeah, motivator. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Yeah. He's smart. And he, listen, he's no fool. Yeah. This is why he went and hired all these guys from big schools and some people who were head coaches. Mm-hmm. He wants them to coach. He's going to oversee it, mm-hmm. but he's he's doing other things. He's selling the program. He's selling the, the university. He's selling his product. This is why he did a, a video with the his uh, the guy over recruiting mm-hmm. to Fort Myers, Florida. He promised to sign one kid a year from that area. And that's good. He Reach back, reaching back, pulling people. Mm-hmm. See, that's huge. People may not think much of it, but that's huge because now he end up getting kids from other parts of Florida. How much of the world, or, well, necessarily the nation, do you think uh, are tuned in to, especially, I guess, young people? Do you think what he's doing at Colorado, because I heard Oregon's coach say, we're playing for wins, he's playing for clicks. And, and in this world today, understanding where young people are, that, that kind of was a cheap shot. But, you know, although he's playing for clicks, does those clicks – actually matter, especially you're talking about recruiting, NIL, uh, building and marketing the program in terms of generating funds that help grow the program. I'm actually okay with it, but how much do you think that really is playing a part in terms of the recruiting of the next generation of young people that could potentially come to Colorado? Man, I don't worry about what them coaches say about, <laughs> you know, because people have opinions. That's right. And But you're correct. Clicks is what people... This is what our young people deal with. Yeah. Clicking. So I have no problem with that. Yeah. All I know is that give the man a couple of years. And if he can keep his staff in place and add to the staff, he's going to do it. Remember, he understands what he needs to do. Recruit. He got to recruit. He's not going to coach, you know, but he's going to recruit. And Dion said, y'all better get me now. 
That's what he said. You better give me now. I said that back in 2000. You said that same thing? I said it to the – when we didn't win the championship <laughs> and I told the coaches, y'all better win it now because we coming. You was talking a little smack? I said, not not really. That's smack, man. When you walk up, y'all better get me now. That's smack talking. I don't care how you dress that up, coach. I can't dr- – uh, okay. No, you can't put no tie on it. You can't put a bow. You got to – that was – you went in there flexing. Y'all better get me now. <laughs> uh, yeah, All that right. was a good time. Uh, that was a good time. Let's let's take a good time, right? Let's take a break. Pay some bills and we come back. We'll get ready to try to close this thing out. So y'all stay tuned more chopping over Kato, all right? Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. The ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Smart Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge because BTR is so close and convenient, they're always one step ahead rather than dead on their feet. So, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. BRAC implemented the Imagine Your Park strategic plan nearly 20 years ago. The results transformed the park system in East Baton Rouge Parish. There are 12 new community parks, six dog parks, Liberty Lagoon Water Park, skateboard parks, fishing ponds, a new conservation area in Central, improved playgrounds, and a growing trail system. It's really a lot to keep track of. So we decided to give you an insider's peek into some of these amazing new community assets through the eyes of the folks who know them best, Brack's community partners. My name is Nathaniel fun and I am Paddle DR. What I often say I am is chief doer of stuff. (laughs) The two things that everyone wanted were paddling and trails and in our case paddle trails. (laughs) And so we did a lot of work to make it so that people could get out on the bayou but without access points no one can use them. Rec has been amazing at building paddle launch sites so that that we can get out on the water and enjoy everything the Rouge has to offer. Not only are they listening to everything that Imagine Your Parks and Imagine Your Parks 2 that we ask for, but it's actually getting done. I don't know about you, but that makes me happy every day of the week. No wonder. Brack is the recipient of the National Gold Medal by the National Recreation and Parks Association. There really is something about East Baton Rouge and national champions. Brack, number one and still getting better. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tool, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com.
Get the memoir from the legendary baseball coach from Southern University, Roger Kador, Against All Odds. Roger refused to let his past dictate his future by rising to legendary college baseball status. An inspiring story of tenacity, faith, and hope. Against All Odds chronicles Coach Kador's determination to reach higher, to want more, and to dig deeper to find the courage to chase his dreams. Against All Odds, get yours today by Cater and Cater Publishing. You are now watching Chopping It Up with Roger Kador and Perry White. All right, we're back with more Chopping Up with Roger Kadar. I'm Perry White. He's Roger Kadar. He's my man on the board. Is Garrett Edgerson. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button right down underneath this video. Get the notification. Every time we go live, we'd love to have your support. Go back and watch any of our previous videos as well as get a notification anytime that we go live. You never know the date, but it's typically on Mondays, but sometimes we switch them up depending on the schedules. And we'd like to thank our sponsors here for sure. Coca-Cola. Got the Coke here, the Monster Energy drink down there, the Body Armor my personal favorite that blue power ray can't never go wrong with that coach you want to talk about some of these products here well they all you know the body armor is it's new on the block uh for coach product they're coming up with another new one pretty soon but this one here help you you know get your electrolyte back in you and it's zero sugar additive low cal calorie so and the monster is a really good drink i tell you what i'm not a big Soda guy, but I tell you, I had one of those. Not bad. Let me ask you this. When you were coaching, coaching, what did you allow your team to hydrate on? Was it just pure water? Yeah, it water yeah. for the most part. We did do uh, Powerade, but, you know, water was the thing. I was old school in, the, in that regard. <laughs> you don't get no taste. You just better go drink some of that water, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> was it ice in it, or you just gave them just flat uh, out yeah, water? Well, it's ice <laughs> Uh, you yeah. said old school, you know, old school. You had to drink that water out the hydrant, you know. No, no. No, no, you got a little, a little ice in that water. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the world today in which, you know, you got so much to choose from and, and all these options and student athletes, man, the world is so much different today for them. It is different, and we have to make adjustment uh, to, to, to be able to work with the young people mm -hmm. because they are who they are in terms of, this is what they grow grew up doing. You got me, and you got to be careful and not try to change everything too soon because it may not work for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, the change is uh, it has to come slow with them. They they can't take it like that, huh? Well, no, it's, yeah. it's different. You know, you you start having their parents call the president, chancellors, and this is what happens. You know. Uh, the coaches are under tremendous amount of pressure yeah. with, the, with the way things are now. Because if you got a weak administration, they'll sure get infiltrate them and, and make it difficult for the coach. So you got to know all of that. And that's one of the reasons I'm glad I'm not coaching anymore. What's coming up for you this week, Coach? Um, oh, I got a speaking engagement Thursday mm -hmm. at the uh, – Zachary Rotary Club. Oh, yeah. So I'm doing that on Thursday, so I'm keeping busy, uh, keeping staying in touch with the public. That's what it's all about, man. You you know, you can't go around and not say Roger Kadar and the public don't know who you're talking about, right? I don't know. It could be. Man, you know, how how often you at the store or anywhere and somebody stops and wants to talk to you? Not a lot. You'll be surprised. Really? Yeah. Every now and then there's someone. But you probably intimidate people because <laughs> not with what you say, but you're just this huge stature of a man. And a lot of times people may be a little nervous to walk up and say something. They usually they do. But, you know, they, when I'm shopping, people have the courtesy to allow me to shop mm -hmm. for the most part. Unless I'm standing waiting on a product, then they'll say something. But as long as I'm in motion mm -hmm. and uh, they are pretty much. Hey, coach, and keep going. What you doing Saturday, coach? It depends. I, I, there is a possibility I could be going to Houston okay. for the playoff game with Dusty. Okay. It's going to say if you wasn't, let's go to the Southern game this weekend. Yeah, that's a good game. <laughs> that <laughs> might be that something. Yeah. But it might be a good one because yeah. I could go Sunday or Monday to the game. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, Southern's playing FAMU this weekend. Gee, what yeah. you laughing at over there? 
<laughs> he want to tell me. I, yeah, you want to see, see coach at the game. Yeah. I know what he's trying to say. Don't wear the walking suit. Ah. I have a short sleeve walking suit. Get, get you a nice suit. We got a cold front coming through. Yeah, get be you a, a little, nice little sweatshirt. Be uh, cool this weekend for you. Yeah, I heard that the cold front was coming in. Yeah. No walking suit, G? Nah. Not at the game. <laughs> we don't need you like that at the game. You've been able to talk to Dusty. How is he doing? And, and you're looking at the Astros trying to fight for a championship. How's, what's things going over there in Houston for him? Well, he's, you know, he thought the, the, his team really played well the last week. You know, he said after coming off of that disaster against, <laughs> against St. Kansas City, you know, people count them out. Then they had to go to Seattle. They won two or three. Then they had to sweep Arizona. And then they needed help from Seattle beating Texas. All of the things fell in places mm-hmm. in terms of what had to happen did happen. Well, you look at overall, they are in a good position, of course, because they made the playoffs, and you'll be trying to get out there and check them out, man. You take some good pictures for us, man, when you get out there. Aaron wants us to take a picture today, by the way. Okay. Do not let us leave this place without sending a picture to Aaron. Well, we're about to do that now because guess what? We reached the end of another great show, man. It has been a good one. I'm glad everybody out there has been able to tune in. And as always, I always say hit the subscribe button right there underneath that video so you can be able to get the notification every time we go live. And we love to have your support. I'm Perry White, my man on the board, Gary Edgerson, and of course, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Roger Kadar. We do this thing, man. We talk about any anything and everything you never know where the conversation it can go from food to sports to no telling coach or to garrett giving rodney to do that thing oh rodney if you're watching over at southern kirshen put us on the you got to put us on the athletic page man we got we got a legend right here man we need this show on the athletic page I blame G for that. Don't blame me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's, it's G's fault? I, I, I plug Coach in, too. Coach, you're supposed to be doing baseball. You're going to do baseball in the spring. Oh. Yeah, see? You're plugging me in. Yeah. You'll be doing baseball games covering Southern baseball this spring. So get ready, Coach. Get your popcorn need... and your chicken wings. Well, that's only for home games, right, G? Well, we got to discuss. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you're doing – you doing yeah. you you doing the hiring? Uh, <laughs> that's not my ministry. I just plugged you in. Man. Coach, so say, coach should do it. Coach say y'all need to talk to his agent now. When y'all want to negotiate the deals and the terms, talk call his agent. All right. All right, let's get ready to get up out of here, man. We'll see you guys next week if the Lord says the same. And we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, hit that, that subscribe button. Sean Moore says, Southern University, defenders of the gold and blue. Nobody knows that more than you because you got enough years at Southern that I think for me and Gary put together, Coach. So At least. At least. So thank you guys for tuning in. All right, Coach, get us out of here. Hit us with the uh. G didn't give me.